Hello and welcome to another episode of The Crossover, a particularly colourful episode. Champion Pride Round continues all the NBL action you need right here. Damien? Who? Gibbo? <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you back, Phil. Jesus, we've I missed totally our back names. <laughs> Let's start over. Well, I want to talk because you've got a bit of a sore back, which you claimed was from you having to shoulder the load of this program while I was gone. Nah, just, you know, a little bit of wear and tear. Nothing, <laughs> nothing really to see here. You're still going to be running? Oh, still good. Still nice. Well, what have you been up to? Oh, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. If you want to watch a stitch up of me, you can go. There's a 12-part series that you can watch on another network. But anyway, let's talk about the game right now. Melbourne and New Zealand. Melbourne, very, very disappointing loss. Yeah, they were a big game for New Zealand. Obviously, lucky they got to play the game. Not sure, Damon, where that water came from over there in New Zealand, if we just take a look here. But not sure where the water came from, but... I knew there leakage. was going to be something coming up here. Some leakage in the pool. This uh, is why you always check the rundowns before. But obviously a very <laughs> big win for New Zealand. Keeps them close to that top two. Potential chance to finish top two. Obviously for the um, United, that loss kind of hurts them. Potentially to now miss out in the top six. So big, uh, big game for the Breakers for sure. They did what they had to do at home. I mean... They've been a little bit wobbly lately, but Barry Brown has come back into the lineup and they just seem to be a little bit more punch, a little bit more punch offensively. So they withstood what the United threw up and they got it done in the end. Well, let's have a look at the ladder right now because it is absolutely all over the shop. You talk about the top six here. Now, you need to be a mathematician to work out exactly who's going to make it at the moment. But as we said, a big loss for Melbourne United. The Taipans and the Breakers now looking safe from the top six. Yeah, they are. They definitely are. Obviously, Taipans play tonight against Brisbane, which you'd expect them to win. But United, they have to win their next game, obviously, to give themselves a chance. The Jack Jumpers get a win. It's so log jammed in there, Damon, that a couple of losses and you're out. Yeah. You look at the Tassie squad. Tassie's got to go. They got Sydney. Sorry, they just lost to Sydney. They got Illawarra to come on the last game of the season. So you would figure that could be a win. So if they can get the 15 wins, um, they, they might be safe. Well, let's talk about the Kings now. Because when I was watching, I was thinking, oh, the Kings are just resting on their laurels a little bit. They're getting a bit too confident. Dropped off. Looks like the JJs were going to take them off. After a slow start, managed to turn that around with an absolute explosion in the second quarter. Yeah, everyone was up in arms. They, they lost two games in a row. Big concern. Are they in trouble? They're the running chance for a reason. They went down. They had a real slow first quarter, but from the second quarter on, they just turned it on. DJ was awesome. Cooks did his usual thing, and they just took care of the jack jumpers with ease. They got another gear to Kings. They got another gear. They took that punch to Tazzy through in the first quarter, and Tazzy was full 100% Tazzy for that first quarter. But then after that, they couldn't maintain it because if you speed up the Kings, that's exactly what they want to do. So I think the jack jumpers lost their way a little bit. But this one, you got to be careful. Perth is coming to town, and Tazzy on the bounce back, they're Oof. tough. Never like a team with their back against the wall. When we talk about championship contenders, I like what I've seen from New Zealand. And when we spoke just before off air, they look to be almost the most injury proof. Now, touch wood, wherever it is in here, that they remain healthy. But they've got guys who can come in. If Sydney loses Xavier Cook somehow or someone goes down, that's a big loss for me. But New Zealand, you see, pretty bulletproof at the moment. Yeah, they do. Like you said, they've got three guards, Brown, Zave, and... Will McDowell White, who's playing awesome <laughs> on the spot. They do. Like, a lot of guards, if one of their bigs goes out, Tom Ab Abercrombie can slide up. Rob Lowe, he had a great game. I think he had 15 and 6 in about 17 minutes. So the production they're producing, it's elite. And, and they will contend for the finals, no doubt. Now, we've had, Damien, some absolutely shocking segments and some shocking bits of content on this show. But your all-DJ team could be one of the most rogue things that I've ever seen. Wait for it. <laughs> I was just thinking today, we got DJ Vasiljevic, the human torch. This dude has had a fantastic season, and he's obviously a big shot maker. But there's a, he's not the only DJ in the league, as we just see him just <laughs> carve up the Tazzy Jack jumpers. But you think about it, there's DJ Mitchell. There's DJ Johnson from Adelaide. Who else we got? We got DJ... Hogue. DJ Boss Hogue. They didn't like it when I called him that in the preseason, but you're liking it now. And then I was thinking, that's four DJs. I need some more DJs. DJ Newbill Gibbo. There we go. DJ Daniel Joyce. <laughs> and Daniel Jackson used to play for the Hawks. Whole bunch of DJs. Well, let's just get straight into this Who Yard right now because you're on an absolute roll. Who's getting it this week? I can't let this man go by <laughs> without getting the battle cry to Navy SEALs. Bryce Jerron Cotton. Yeah, I looked that up, Jerron. <laughs> Out of the University of Providence. Bryce, see that? When you guys was acting like he wasn't that guy, 
Oh, 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 hold on. Hold nah, on. Nah, nah. Said hold that. on. Where on earth did we act like he was? I thought I heard it, but no. <laughs> but Bryce reminded everybody that he is that dude with the 40 chicken piece wing dinner with mashed potatoes and gravy on the side with a side, with side dish of corn. Um, they can't guard him. The dude's too quick, too good of a shot maker. He got every shot in the arsenal. You try to get up on him, you can't. He's too quick. And he's got the bunny still. He's getting up, he's dunking on people. And seven boards to go with it all. So what else can this dude do? He's done everything except he needs to get another chip. And he needs to get another chip. <laughs> and he, is this the year? I don't know. But for that 40 piece, it's not going to go unnoticed. Bryce, well done, my man. Who y'all to you, big fella? I'm even going to kick my feet out, kick Gibbo on the shins, <laughs> poof, and hit the butt. Ooh. Ah. Almost. I love creating some absolutely false controversy there. You guys have been hating on Bryce all year. <laughs> Felix says he shouldn't even been in the league. Look at that. Unbelievable stuff. Do we get a bit of, you know, what would be the term for it? A bit of fatigue with Bryce Cotton. We talk about the MVP conversation every year. He's almost an afterthought and he keeps winning. Yeah, we do. The same thing happens with LeBron, but like Damon said, you can't guard him. You really can't. Every year he steps up. He has quiet games, but then he comes up and has a 40 piece. He's had 30 or 35 the game before and scores all over the floor. Perth have done a great job getting him the ball, as they always do. And how do you guard him? Is he back in contention? Well, he's in contention, but what's his chance for MVP? Because you got Cooks, you got Creek, but he's putting up big time numbers as well. There's no wrong answer. Any one of them three. Like, I still like Zave Cooks because of finish top. And he's playing like 20, 22 minutes a game. Dave, what would he do with 34 minutes? Yeah. I don't know. But if he didn't win it, there's no wrong answer with Creaky and Cotton the way they've been playing. Well, I'll tell you what, there might be a couple of other MVPs on this Perth Wildcats team because the cheerleaders are just getting a little more involved in the game than some of them on the other teams. Have a look at this. Well, this is absolutely elite. Back in the day, these guys used to before, this is pre-COVID, they used to circle the whole team's bench. So they'd go all the <laughs> way around and make a big circle. And the first time you were in around it, it was quite a bit of a shock to the system, but what a, what a little feature they have. And it actually gets you up and about when you're playing there. It's, it's quite an entertaining. They're little... staring directly at the and, players. And like, is that? showed them no respect, walking right through. <laughs> I love it. That is Wilma elite. giving him a bit. Wilma the Wildcat giving him a bit of cheek on the way out as well. That is elite content, but some great moves. Not bad. I oh, feel no. like there's potential, David. <laughs> <for, laughs> maybe they could spice things up and maybe add some new dance moves. <laughs> 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 Have a look at look this. Look at the oh. hip movement. Look at the little two-step, little salsa is it, action. Little, is, hey. it, is it too late for Pete Hooley to come in for segment two? Look at the little two-step. <laughs> look at the hip movement. <laughs> Are your legs in plaster? <laughs> Why are you so stiff? Is that the mummy dance? Oh, uh, let's, just, let's just make sure we keep playing clips from episode one there and we just won't <laughs> venture into episode two. Maybe some potential for some new moves there for, oh, the, for the Perth God. Wildcat cheerleaders. Oh, I'll tell you what, Peter Hooley, Peter Hooley might be coming into this seat <laughs> next week, but I'll tell you what, it's time to hear it from the boys from sports. So we're going to cut to a break, but first, the Sports Bet Lads with all you need to know. Welcome to At The Line, my name is Simon Legg and we're here to talk about the NBL and thankfully I'm joined by former Townsville crocodile, Josh <laughs> Jenkins. Uh, kind of, kind of. Uh, good to be here though, Leggy, and heaps happening. The play-in tournament, the all-important play-in tournament is not far away. It's very close. We're at the pointy end of the season and we did discuss this last week on the show but there has been a few changes so as we, as we bring the graphic up now, can you please talk us through this again because we might need a bit of an explanation. Well, that's what it looked like at the end of round 16. You can see uh, who's who in the zoo and if we uh, bring up the next graphic uh, because uh, this is what it looks like now. Now, of course, we are recording before a couple of games have uh, played, so it might shift a little bit. But the important thing to explain, the top two teams go straight in. So right now, Cairns and Sydney go all the way through. We can see the seeding qualifier, so third v fourth play. And the winner of that goes straight in to see the Taipans, and then the loser goes into a sudden death game against the winner of South East Melbourne and, F and Perth. So... Uh, it's a great concept. It's going to be so exciting. We're already talking about it, and there's still some games to go of the regular season. There are some games to go, and we're going to now touch on a, sun a match on Sunday, which we're very excited about. It's the Kings and the Phoenix, and the prices there might look like the Kings are, I guess, a, a comfortable favourite, but we actually think this game might be a little bit closer because, question I need to ask you, are the Kings vulnerable after the last five? No, to quote Aaron Rodgers, R-E-L-A-X. Relax. Kings fans, look. Let's have a look at their last or their past five games because things might be, you know, I know the coach, Chase Buford's like, ah, we need to do this, we need to do that, we're a bit soft. But they've lost their past two against good teams, the second and third 
best team in, in the NBL. And when you go to Perth and play the Wildcats, that's a tough uh, thing to do. We can see five games back, they handled Perth. So I think things are going OK for the Kings. Don't worry about them. And the team they're playing, South East Melbourne, they simply have to win. And we want to look at their last five games as well just to try and track their form guide because... They're starting to come into a little bit of form. Can they actually beat the Kings, though? They've done everything they need to do. So they've won their past three against good opposition, quality opposition. So, you know, Ryan Brockhoff goes down. Trey Cal needs to step up and fill that void, hit some outside shots. But if they can get the job done against Sydney, they give themselves a chance. They lose, then they need other teams to, to help them out to make it. So a uh, very important game, a crucial last game for the Phoenix. And now, speaking of that game, what is your same game multi? Yeah, I like... It's going to be a good game and there's plenty of betting options. But let's go and hone in on the Kings. Sydney to win 1-10. to 10. I think they'll get the job done at home and make it real hard for the Phoenix. Xavier Cook to do what he does and DJ Vasiljevic, two plus three pointers. I like that one. Very good, Josh. And if you want to follow Josh in at home, please make sure you do so responsibly. You know the score. Stay in control. Gamble responsibly. Let's check out some of the top 10 plays from round 16, all thanks to NBL Chains. Chains is the officially licensed digital collectibles of the NBL. It's a chance for fans to collect and trade their favourite NBL player moments in a unique and exciting way. So massive, massive moments in the NBL over round 16, all thanks to NBL Chains there. Now, guys, massive moments. Which one for you guys do you reckon, of course, voted on the Discord community? Of course, the online operators as the best moment of round 16. I would like to think it is a fairly easy one. Oh, geez, that's put me on the spot. I'm going to go... <laughs> I'm gonna go with, Did you watch any of the I'm games? I'm going to go with Tyler Harvey's game winner in New Zealand. Narrowly beating, narrowly beating Jarrell Brantley's bank three in Sydney to the dagger. But I'm going to go with Tyler as well. It was an absolute landslide online on Discord. Of course, it was Tyler Harvey hitting the almost half-court game winner against New Zealand. Those beautiful, beautiful yellow jerseys. What a great play call, too, by Jacob Jacomas. Gets to get the ball to Tyler, just casually come down the court. <laughs> great a, play call. Get a ball screen from Sam. Pull! <laughs> just like we drew it up. I call game. How good is that? And I'll tell you what, if you jump online to the NBL Discord, you can have your chance to win a jersey just by voting. One of those beautiful yellow jerseys could be yours just by voting. So if you want to get in on the action, join the NBL Chains community by heading on over to the Chains website to learn more. Chains.basketball.com.au. Absolutely all happening in the online space. Have you got yourself any NBL Chains yet? Not yet. You? No, not yet. <laughs> I do not. The, the, the South East Melbourne Phoenix, now, the win against Cairns during the week was massive. We can't get too much out of you because you're very fond of the Phoenix and you will never talk bad about them. But where do you put them right now? Well, they're sitting nicely. Now that United <laughs> have lost their game, they had a great win at the State Basketball Centre. Elite. That, I was there, sideline. Awesome, unbelievable atmosphere. Crowd was going off. The Birdman was there. He was missing his favourite mate. If we can pop him up there. Let's see the Birdman. <laughs> Looking for his bachelor. <laughs> But that now, place... I, I will say that's a little bit a little bit off from there. I will say that is a big miss from the South East Melbourne Birdman there. Nah, he loves you, Felix. But the, the crowd <laughs> there, the game, the Phoenix, they're, they're doing it right now. They've got to go to Sydney tomorrow, play there. That's obviously going to be a tough, tough... They need to win that to definitely lock their position away. But if they can get in, that they'll cause some some issues. But health, health-wise, has always hurt them. Ryan Brockhoff's out. Hopefully, he gets back for finals. But it always comes down to, to the fitness for the Phoenix. They got the pit ball... They got Mitch Creek, so if Mitch Creek is on the bus, coach is doing a good job. But they also got Alice Big Sauce Williams is balling out, but Creek is leading from the front in every way. Big Sauce has been phenomenal. Gary Brown, me amigo, was great against against Cairns. Look, when, when they're switched on and playing together like that and, and, and really going inside as a focal point, they're tough to beat. We've always said that. Even with Rowdy Brokoff being out, Trey Kells is that guy that's got to step up for that perimeter shooting. But even Ruben Tarangi give up. Ruben's been fantastic, too. So they get in that six, which looks like they're going to. They can make some noise. Ruben's another guy that's just needed to step up for quite a while. And he looks to be finding his feet a little bit more now. Yeah, he has. He's been start of opportunity. Obviously, with these other guys we just mentioned, it's hard to find time. You know, Simon kind of shortened his rotations. But Ruben was great in this game. That's a... 
Big time three there for Creek. Ruben got that seal, kick out three, and that essentially put the game away. But, yeah, you're right. Guys like Ruben, if he can step in, play with confidence, and, and I think he's had that the last two games, they'll be able to cover for, for Brock off being out. And, again, they give him a great chance. But you're right, Creek's been awesome. Alan Williams has been awesome. Trey Kell, Brown, they, they've, they've got some weapons as well. The big one coming up on Sunday when Creek matches up against Xavier Cooks. Now, we would say right now the two leading front runners for the MVP. And sometimes these awards are decided in moments like this. I reckon it's neck and neck right now between the two. But if either one can have a massive game here and potentially show up the other, this is where you can make a difference. I would love to know who's voting. Who put your name to it? We need to see who voted for who. Um, yeah, it's a big game, but I'm still thinking, especially the way the results gone, that Sydney doesn't need this win to finish first. I don't, yeah, of course they're going to come out and win and try to win at home in front of 14,000 people, however many, but I wouldn't be surprised if Chase Buford pulls his little card out and says, you've played enough Xavier Cooks. He you seems to be doing that most of the time. Ball. We just spoke about how it's unusual. That, and, and you can't knock it because Sydney win games and Xavier Cooks plays fantastic basketball. But, you know, we, we want to see him out there for a little bit longer. Now, in Chase's world, he doesn't play that many minutes. Well, I don't think he, they're not going for indiv individual awards and Cooks isn't probably either. He's just out there playing his game and he's putting up great numbers. Like you said, if he plays 30 minutes, his numbers would be through the roof. But... They have a system, it's worked, they've got so many guys off the bench and I think that's why their bench productivity is so good because Chase rotates these guys, they know when they're going to come in so they know when they're going to play. You have so much more confidence when you know you're going to be on the floor. Yeah, the Kings have nailed it with Chase Buford, definitely the off-court antics are matched by on-court there. But we're going to head to a break right now, Cairns and Brisbane coming up next. The Sunshine Stoush, that needs a new name. <laughs> Well, the Cairns type ends have locked their place in the top six, but of course, the all-important standings are there. You want to get home court and you want to get a favourable matchup. For the Brisbane Bullets, they're just playing for pride at the moment. They're doing a pretty decent job of just being able to come and finish this season out with a little bit of respectability. Well, they have, yeah. Obviously, they've got a few injuries. Cadiz out, Krebs out, Harry Froling, we're thinking of him. Changes their team lineup a little bit and they had a tough loss against the Breakers. They'll be looking to, to finish this season strong and hopefully get a couple of wins to, to give their fans a little bit something to, to think about in the offseason. And playing against their interstate rivals, you know, they'll, they'll dig deep and they'll find something. Like Tyler Johnson, I think he wants to be out here next year. I think, I don't know if it's going to be with Brisbane, but I think he wants to play basketball again in the NBL, so he could turn it up today. Can we think of a better name than the Sunshine Stoush? I feel like we need to go to a poll. <laughs> it, was, it was a Q Cup or the Queensland Cup or... The Queensland Cup. They, what do they call it? The Q Clash in the AFL? The Sunshine Stouse just does not work for me. It doesn't, it doesn't scream exciting sporting event. Something to do with humidity. <laughs> uh, Cairns, of course, without Pinder. Now, not as big of a loss, it seems, according to their record, than when you would think because they have won six games without him. They lost two when he came back in the team, and that is not a knock on Keanu Pinder at all. It's just saying that they've, they've been able to fill that void when he's out. Yeah, they have, and when someone sits out for that long, it's going to take time to adjust and get back into a rhythm with someone, a big piece like him coming back in. So they lost their two games, and no doubt with him being injured, and, and hopefully he's back for the last kind of uh, round of the season, they'll, they'll get back to their usual routine, usual rotations. Hogue will step up. Scott needs to step up. Damon from his last game didn't play well against the Phoenix. So big game for them on the home floor and hopefully they're, they're looking to lock away that top two position. And they'll be disappointed with that Phoenix loss because I thought they had control of that game and they just got sloppy turnovers late. I mean, obviously caused by Phoenix, but to a degree, they wouldn't be happy with the way they finished it. So they'll come out tonight, even though it's Brisbane and even though Brisbane is Brisbane, they're still going to come out here to just to try to improve because they got to play good basketball heading into the finals. Now, barring injury, of course, Keanu's second half of the season hasn't exactly been as exciting as his first half. Did teams sort of work out how to play him a bit? I think they did. I think it was Perth early on. Uh, kind of started. They, they guarded him more. They were more physical. They looked to double-team him. They also attacked him on the other end, so made him play defense and tried to tire him out that way. And obviously he's missed a, a big bunch of games now. So, again, hopefully he gets back and healthy and he can get back into some kind of rhythm to help them have a chance to, to have a, a crack at winning the title. This guy right here, though, DJ Hogue, my goodness. 
Old like DJ I, team. <laughs> like I said in the um, when I saw him in the Blitz up in Darwin, I said this guy is his jumper is like we haven't seen in a while. I think I don't want to say he's too good for this league because this league is great, but his pay packet I don't think Cam's can afford this guy. I, I, I would be surprised if he's here next year, only because Cairns probably can't open up the bag big enough for him, but he can score from all over the place. He's a mismatch. He's running ball screens, give ball. Like, he shouldn't be doing that at six foot nine. I don't know how he's supposed to guard him. You can't give him any airspace whatsoever. Just having a phenomenal season. He's got that Kevin Brooks kind of style game that you would have played against. I'm sure you know him a lot better, but do you, see, do you have him in your, in your all-star five? Whew. I'm going to have to go back and think about <laughs> it, but at least in the second team, at minimum. But he could, um, he got me on the spot with that one. But damn, he's tough. McCall's been another guy for the Cairns Star fans. Now, Keanu Pinn has been the poster boy for this team throughout the season, but McCall just keeps getting it done. Yeah, he has. And he, didn't, he didn't have a great shooting night against the Phoenix. He went a little bit one out, and no doubt he'll look to share the ball a little bit more and, and get his guys involved. He's such a great playmaker. He's a strong target. No doubt Cairns will try and post him up inside at some point in this game, probably late in the game to try and win the game. But he's great from all over the floor. He was a defensive player last year. He's been more offensive orientated this year, but he's, he's a big key to, to their success as well. Well, the Brisbane Bullets, of course, haven't had the season they would have wanted, especially with the big signing of Aaron Baines. Right now, what's your report card looking for Aaron Baines? Injuries included, and we've got to remember he was coming off a substantial injury that sent him out of the NBA. D? <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, he was great in the Blitz. Remember the Blitz? Yeah. He was great. No, I was all so excited for the season. He was up and about. He was showing a lot of enthusiasm and, and gratitude and leadership. And then he just, he just went missing. Just totally went missing. Did he get re-injured during the season? I don't think so. So, yeah, he'd be disappointed with his own form. Before we wrap up, predictions? Tom, cans by 17. <laughs> Top bands by 12. Top bands by 1,000. <laughs> Enjoy the game. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>